the one, the only, Ben Cio. Welcome to Yeshiva YouTube Table Enable. So continue to show from Rachel Mi or Rachayim. Simon Reishai and Tet 270 on Hilchah Shabbos. We're going to talk a lot about Muxa today. We haven't talked about Muxa too much. One of the more famous concepts on Shabbos. So I'll give you a good explanation, especially to Ian to lean on, about the difference between two different basic categories of Muxa and the different halachas based on that. Aleph. Ne'er she'ed liku ba'o ba'osah Shabbos. Let's say you lit a candle on Shabbos. Either you lit a candle to see in your house. Or ne'er Shabbos, the most common example. Avo b'sheh kaba, even though it goes out, also the talfla. You can no longer move that anymore. V'chein mutar ha'moser ha'shem and shemener she'ed liku ba'osah Shabbos. Let's say you lit oil candles. You had oil left over. Could I use that oil? Maybe I use oil that was edible. Could I use that, edi- that oil with my salad? Also the talfla, the stopping man of Shabbos. You can't use that on Shabbos. Why? Because this is a concept called Muksa Machmas Isra. Because when Shabbos started, I didn't plan on using it, right? Then the, the fire, right? I can't extinguish the fire, so therefore I can't touch it. I can't extinguish it. You can't move the candle, so the wick becomes a, a buses to the fire, like more explained. And the oil uh, becomes a buses to the wick. And the, the container, the kli, the utensil, the glass that's holding the oil, that becomes. A bustle davar aser, and the candles has become a bustle davar aser. The whole thing is bustle davar aser, and then you came and toppled the whole thing. Even after it goes out, even if you anticipated it going out, you know your candle is not going. You can't move those nerei shabbos the entire shabbos, and you can't use the oil. It's all muksa machmas iser. You can't extinguish the fire, and therefore you can't use it at all. Base nerei zeh shabbos marah shabbos lozatul lafil aser agubal aser amgama aser. Not only can't you move it for right to to use it to take the oil and to use it, you can't even use it even if you need the place. Or you need, right, the candle for something else. I don't know, to wipe your face off. I don't know, with the candle or something like that. Or take the, the metal uh, candelabras and you want to uh, put it on your table to make your table look nice, like you're a rich person. You're nice in the silver candelabras. You can't do that. You, why not? Even though normally by Klisha Malachalis, we're going to learn that a hammer, for example, which is normally used for a malacha, right, to, to bang in nails is a malacha in shops. However, if you want to use it, you need a place where the hammer is, or you would need it to crack open a walnut. You're allowed to do that by Klisha Malachtali, sir. By this, Moksa, you're not allowed to do that. V'yesh Mishahitya, the Shulchanar does bring someone who's Machya. V'lo Niradvara, the Shulchanar concludes, we don't pass him like that. Haka V'yesh Omer Dimishu, who is in this, Fener Moisalab, someone who's considered a very delicate person, a luxurious person. It's disgusting to him to have the remainder of a candle. Sometimes, you know, you use oil and Basically, the wick becomes black and makes the oil look very bad. For him, he could take it out. It's disgusting for him. Even his complete moksha, you can move it. The Torah allowed that. It's only the Rabbana moksha. You're allowed to do it in a case where it's an onus. It's a situation where it's very difficult for you. Basically, the person who's machmer didn't lose. Basically, it's better to be makel. There's the concept by a dead person, you can put bread on him and you can move him. What about to put bread on the candle, labra on Shabbos, oh, sorry, and move it because of the bread? You can't do that. Don't rely on him because, as we'll see, this is a very severe type of muksa that we're dealing with, much more much more severe than a klishim Let's say you made it tonight. And I said, when this nair extinguishes on Shabbos, I'm going to use it. Made it tonight. Some doesn't work. The minute like the Ramah says, it's not to rely on the tonight. I'll explain why. Within that tonight, I in the command Simon Tar Fresh line, fed by Hilchos Hilchos Yantiv, Hilchos Sukha specifically, the Nogin, the Taltolo, Algide, and Huli. Even though we don't rely on Lechem, on bread, or we don't rely on the fact that you make a tonight, a stipulation. You can't tell a non-Jew to move the nair if it's in the way. It's like you made a tonight. And even if you hold it tonight, the Ramos says tonight is not acceptable. But here, it's one level lower because you're not moving it. It's only Amir Akum, which is Darabana. Mux is Darabana. Trade Darabana when not usually goes there. Hey, Nair Shayliku Bishab is a Chayo the Chola. Let's say you lit a candle. In a permitted fashion, on Shabbos, not before Shabbos, but on Shabbos, you lit it so that a woman can give birth. Olachola, our sick person, Chalidish Belkanis, Sakana, we learned yesterday. Vialda Chaya, 
she gave birth. And it's Rapeth, oh, the Chola got better. Motel, Atatl, and Kaba. If it extinguishes, you're allowed to move it. Also, I made a mistake. I lit a fire on Shabbos by accident for no reason. I made a mistake. You're allowed to move it. And the Mogad of Ramad, it doesn't, it's not talking about Shogi, even if it was Mazit. The real reason you're allowed to move it has nothing to do, it's because it was lit on Shabbos. It's supposed to be lit before Shabbos, it was lit on Shabbos. How does that help? Stay tuned for Ian Talina, I'll explain this. Vav, Ne'er Shalom Hudlok, Hedlikah Bawosah Shabbos, Hafilu Hu Shalcheres the Mois. You didn't light this candle on Shabbos, but it was a candle you lit last Shabbos, right? And it's in an earthenware vessel. It's disgusting. I feel who shall nef the masriach, mojal atalzlo, the muksa machmas mius motor. There's a concept, an opinion in the Gemara. This thing is disgusting. It makes it muksa. We hold that's not true. We don't pass on that. We hold muksa machmas mius is not motor as long as you could use it for something, right? That's something you use for a fire. Now it was used last week. Now you want to use it to put. I don't know to put your your seeds in, uh, or to put your to put your salt in, or you can dip it in your challah. You're allowed to do it. I don't know, kind of disgusting, but I don't know. Zion menorah being dola being tana. Say you have a candelabra, if it's big or small. You mean shell prokin? Let's say some kind of labra, the pieces come out. And metalzin also, you can't move that. The chayshin and shem atipol with the part of the serena and imsa also clip. It's like zayir that abana. It might drop out of your hand. The pieces might break, and then you might put it back in. And when you put it back in, if you have to stick it really tightly. That's called Masak and Mana, which is this or the right side. I feel we made them shall proc him. They're going to make Xavier, even if it's not disassembled, it can't disassemble, it's one piece. El Ishba Kharitz himself, if it don't shall proc him. It looks like it has parts. It's indented to look on the outer design to look like it's composed of parts. Also, the top you can't because it's one part, it's part of a bigger Xera that it, you'll confuse this with another candelabra which does have pieces, detachable pieces, and then it'll fall out and you'll put it back. And that's part of this is all right. So again, this is not xera like xera because it's about confusion. Xera means you might forget, make a mistake. Confusion is something else. That's not a problem. Xera like xera. Hope you enjoyed today's share. Stay tuned for Ian to Lena where I discuss a fundamental difference between two types of moksa. Moksa, which is moksa makmas gufo, real moksa, versus klishmatla isra, which is half moksa. I'll talk about this Ian to Lena coming up next.